What's up everybody, Johnny over at Witchcraft Whips. Today I thought we were gonna have a look at uh, bullwhip transitions. Uh, what it is, uh, what's important, what's not important, and how I go about making my transitions. First up, what is the transition? Well, the transition refers to the transition from the solid handle into the flexible thong. Generally, your handle foundation extends to just past the transition knot, where it ends abruptly, and then it's all leather from down here. And right where the handle ends, inside the whip, you will have sort of a natural transition, if you will, as there's more leather in the thong up here, and it tapers down, making it more flexible. However, over time, as the whip breaks in and becomes more supple and uh, flexible, this transition can become too weak, creating a wet noodle effect. Uh, essentially what that is, this is a handle foundation, is that the thong drops off the end of the handle straight down. And that could pose a potential problem. And the problem that might occur is... Uh, Imagine, if you will, that this is your handle foundation, spring steel, or whatever it might be. And the green is the leather or the thong. If it were to drop straight down, like this, the wet noodle, the handle might actually rub against the leather on the inside. And having the handle constantly rub slightly inside the thong might, in worst case scenario, destroy the leather, poke out through the thong. And that's no good. Now I can go about reinforcing the transitions in different ways. Like I said, some bind, some don't. As long as you're positive that the end of your handle won't hurt the whip. Now I do a bit of binding on my whips, not on the hatband whips, but I'm just using this for reference as it's small and convenient. Like I said, the most important aspect of the binding is to protect the thong from the end of the handle. Now when I bind my transitions on my bull whips, the primary point for me is to protect the thong from the end of the handle. And normally what I do is, now I start my binding on the handle and I wrap it very tightly just past the end of the handle so that there's no way that the thong can bend right at the steel handle. So if it were to bend sharply, it will bend sharply out here and be held up by the binding. So that way the steel won't hurt the leather. That's the most important aspect. Now the other aspect uh, is purely aesthetical. You know, having a nice transition from the handle into the thong. That's something I like to see in a good whip. And naturally, I do my best to incorporate that into mine as well. But now on to actual binding. Uh, I often see binding that looks like this. Uh, this is what I refer to as mummy binding. It uh, comes off as very chaotic. Probably the one making the whip just run the sinew back and forth multiple times. And uh, usually end up with uh, something like this. The problem with this is that you might have different tension at different points of the transition. Uh, you might have gaps, you might have some extra material in some places, so the whip might be slightly more solid here and have a flexible spot right here. Now this is uh, generally how I bind my transitions. Right here you have sort of a solid sleeve of strong binding. Your a handle inside the whip will end about there. So I start my binding on the handle and I bind it very strongly to about here and when I get to this point I start easing off the pressure a bit for another section and then I move into a crisscross pattern that opens up as it gets further out the thong. And from this point, just beyond the handle, I gradually ease off the amount of pull that I put into the binding all the way out. And I find that for me that creates a really nice transition. 
And how far down the thong should you bind your whip? Well, I can't really tell you because that depends on the length of the whip. It depends on the weight of the whip. And uh, probably experience will be your best guide. On, generally, on a shorter whip, say a four foot bull whip, uh, I would keep the binding fairly short and close to the handle to not take away flexibility from the thong. Because if I would bind that just as long as I would an 8 foot bull whip, the 4 foot whip would probably take a very long time to break in and have trouble forming the loop to get it to crack readily. But speaking very generally, I uh, bind this about the same distance for all whips that 6 foot and up. Uh, on shorter whips the binding is a bit shorter. And I do a bit of binding on the first belly and the second belly. Uh, on the first belly I bind that a bit longer and the binding on the second belly will be a bit shorter. And I can't tell you the exact distance because I don't measure it, you know, it's a general feel thing considering the weight of the whip and the general action and what suits in that particular case. So that's a short video on bullwhip transitions. Uh, I hope it was somewhat interesting to some of you. If you got any ideas on a particular subject or anything you want me to cover in a future video, please do let me know.